Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today I'm going to create a, a doll face because I am repairing a doll. So I actually have a doll body that doesn't have a head. So I'm going to create a head for this doll, but I usually start with the face. Now I'm using the cause clay, which is some, another version of polymer clay. It's supposed to be a little bit more pliable, but I've been wanting to try it out. The really cool part is the color of this clay straight out the package is the same as the skin tone of the doll that I'm repairing. So I was really, really excited about that because normally I mix several different colors to get the complexion tone that I want. But in this instance, but this cause clay, I was able to use it right out of the package. Now dolls, when I'm shaping my doll face, I'm using, working on it on a little piece of tile. This is just a tile that you get from one of the home stores. And I generally start with a piece of clay about the size of a grape. So dolls, what I do, I make my face completely like this and add the back of the head on later. And right here, I'm just showing myself adding the little neck area and just shaping it to the head of the doll. Now this is a child size doll, so I'm making the head a little bit rounder and shorter so it won't be out of proportion with the little body that I'm fixing it for. Now after I got the general shape of the neck and the head, I pulled out a few of my tools to just prepare myself for what I was about to do. Now this is just a random plastic tool that I had in a clay set. I'm just shaping the neck a little bit. So when I'm making my dolls, I don't have any picture or anything from inspiration. I'm working straight out of my imagination. But there's nothing wrong if you need a picture to look at while you create your doll. Now, all I know is I want it to be a little girl with a curious, pleasant personality. I want her to have bright eyes and a big smile. So I'm just winging it, freehanding this little doll face. So bear with me in the process because it may get a little strange before it gets better. So now that I have the shape of the head and the neck area together, I'm just going to make some little indentations for the eyes. I feel like the head is a little bit tall, so I'm going to cut it down a little bit because I don't want this doll's face to be too big and out of proportion with the body. So just trimmed off that part a little bit and just shaping it a little. Now dolls, you see me here using these little tools that have tiny silicone tips. They're really wonderful for shaping doll faces. Years ago when I made my first polymer clay dollhouse dolls, I just used toothpicks, safety pins, the ends of my paint brushes and things like that to create my doll faces. So these are new to me. But I was inspired to get the little silicone tools after watching Tiny Keyhole Minis. Jolene used those silicone tools to make the lovely hands on her granny doll named Margot. So definitely check out her channel to see how her 12 scale doll was made. Now even though I'm not making the whole doll in this instance, I'm just repairing the doll by creating a face for it. The process for making a head and face is exactly the same. So I put her a little button nose on. I also added three little balls in the mouth and chin area. And then I put two little balls on the cheeks to give the doll some cheekbones. Now I know the doll looks pretty rough. It actually almost looks like a skeleton, but I promise by the time I'm done, it won't. Now this, like I said, is gonna be a little girl. And I just kind of wanted to make her have like a sort of a smiley face, a happy face, a very pleasant, soft looking face and although it doesn't look like it now you will see it transform as I continue to work now I'm just patting in her cheeks smoothing it with that silicone tool blending it in really nicely now this is pretty tedious process dolls it takes a lot longer than what is shown here in the video but I did want you to see how it's done in case you want to make a 12 scale doll now you definitely want to take your time. If you have to work on it a while and put it away, you definitely can do that. That's the wonderful thing about polymer clay. It doesn't dry out, so you can work on it over the course of a week or two weeks if you need to, to get the shape and the face that you want for your doll. But take your time, allow yourself the time to learn and grow. Now I'm bringing it up a little bit closer here so you can see what I did, how I'm separating the area for the lips and defining the chin area. 
And again, just taking my time to blend it around because see, I wanted her to kind of have a smile. Now, I don't know if you can see her smile yet, but that's what I see inside my mind or my imagination. And I guess I'm really big on giving dolls expression in their faces. That's one of the things I really don't like about a lot of mass produced dolls. The dolls have blank stares and they don't really look alive or like they have character or personality. So I'm always trying to bring out a character or personality in the dolls that I make. Now dolls, while you're working on your doll, constantly turn it and look at it from all different angles. If you see anything you don't like, you know, the clay is soft. You can push it, you can bend it, you can add clay, you can take clay away. You know, you can just like work on it until you like or are beginning to like what you see. In the beginning stages, you don't see much, but you just keep working with it. You just keep working with it until you start to get a form or facial features that you really, really like. Now that I have the basic structure for the little face, I'm going to add some additional pieces of the clay to build up or build out other characteristics that I try, I'm trying to bring out. So I'm going to give her like a brow line. And I just pinched off a small piece of clay and just rolled it between my fingers and just kind of a rolled uh, shape. And I'm just going to lay it right above her eye socket. And the little snake of clay was big enough for me to make both of her brow lines on both sides of her face. So I laid it above both the eye sockets and just pressed it in. And then I began to shape it with my tool. After I worked on her eyebrows a little bit and kind of got that brow line in order, I started to work on her nose. And I used a little toothpick just to open up her nostrils. I actually made the nose a little bit bigger than I wanted for a child, but I will shape it out a little bit more to make it a little bit smaller so that it wouldn't be too large because children have really small noses. We generally don't start morphing into our adult nose till we get about 13 or 14, things start to really change. So children have small noses, so I just wanted to make hers more in proportion to her face. So now that I trimmed her nose down and smoothed it in, I feel a lot better about her face. So I'm going to go ahead and start to add a few more of the details to really bring her face and her look out. Now you can kind of see the shape of her eyes. You can see her nose, her cheekbones. And so now I'm going to just go ahead and put in the beginning stages of her eyes. Now I just use a small ball of white clay and pack it into the eye socket. Now, to me, it gives me a nice base to paint on when I begin to actually, like I said, put the expression and character into the eyes. So I put it in, I kind of smooth it out. I don't really round it. I just smooth it out and try to pack it in into the shape of the eye socket. And then I did the exact same thing on the other side. Just packed it in and tried to shape it in to the shape of the eye socket. I kind of put a little blob in there should have rolled it into a ball but it's going to work out dolls especially after i put on her eyelids and everything so it'll be fine now after i got her eye packed into the socket i needed to go ahead and shape it a little bit which i did and then i went on to roll a couple more thin snakes of clay to be her upper eyelid and her lower eyelid so that it will cover up some of that white part to her eye because nobody's eyes look like that. So I just took little bits of the clay and laid it right above where the like, white part of the eye is and I started to blend it in and just little by little just pat it around there to be the actual eyelid. Now dolls, this part you'll really need to take your time with because I really can't say how much or little you're going to need because it's going to depend on the type of expression you want your doll to have the eyes are where all the character and expression come from. So you're really going to have to play with it to get it to the place that you want it to be. Whether you want the eye to go up, you want it to go down, you want them to be smiling or angry or whatever. You're going to have to just play with it a little bit. Yes, definitely. When you're making a doll, you definitely have to be in the mindset of play. Now, dolls, I didn't show it, but I did just add a simple ear 
to the side of her head and just a small piece of clay, sort of in a round oval shape. Now dolls, creating an ear on your doll is totally up to you. My early dolls didn't really have ears and the ones that I made were very, very simple. I will show how I made the ear when I make a complete doll from start to finish. Doll ears are not mandatory. It's totally up to you. Now that her eyes and eye lids are in place, I want to do a little bit of smoothing and just shaping around, around her mouth area, doing just a few little finishing touches to prepare her so she'll be ready to bake. Now I am going to just turn her to the side for a minute so you can actually see how her ears look. I do actually feel like her ears are a little big, but she's going to have a lot of hair. It'll be covered up so you won't even notice. So I'm going to leave them as they are. Now dolls, keep in mind if you do something to your clay that you don't like or you want to add, you can sand it, you can file it, you can carve it, shave it down. You have a lot of creative freedom with polymer clay and cause clay. If this is your first time, relax and breathe and don't be intimidated. My grandmother always said, practice makes perfect. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. You can correct them and that's how you learn. Now dolls, keep in mind, I'm gonna pre-bake her face before I add the back of her head. And here you just see me trying to do a little smoothing of her face and her cheeks. I think she turned out really cute. I can't wait to paint in her eyes and add her hair and connect her to the little body that I have set aside for her. I just can't wait to start dressing all the little girl dolls. I do have several of them now, you know. So if you haven't seen the first video, I will leave a link in the description. This video is part of a doll repair series. So check out my playlist. So let me go ahead and pop her in the oven and get her all baked so I can add the back of her head and show you the rest of this process. And here she is, dolls, fresh out of the oven. I baked her according to the instructions and she turned out great. Oh, now this is another doll face that I made. Uh, in addition to her, I didn't show it in the process. I will show you how to make additional dolls later, but let me just show you how I added the back of the head to the dolls. So I create a little ball and smash it onto the back of the face part and shape it around and create a neck on it as well. Now I just want you all to be clear, the front of it has already been baked. So now I'm adding the back of the head and you wanna shape it so that it'll match um, the shape of the face. You don't want it to be too flat or too round. You want it to be in proportion. Again, keeping in your mind roughly the size of a grape and just smoothing it out with my fingers. Again, you wanna lock on a regular um, round or kind of oval shape, but if you have any imperfections, you will be able to sand it or smooth it after it bakes. Now I'm trying to make sure the neck area is open so that when it dries, I'll be able to add the wire. And there she is. She's been baked front and back. The back of her head is solid and she's ready to be added to the doll body. So let me go ahead and get her assembled. Now dolls, this is the body of a mass produced doll. I did make a few modifications in a previous video because the body was kind of flimsy. So now here I am adding the new head that I've created to this body with hot glue. I'm just adding a nice glob all the way around the little nub of the neck and inserting it into the base of the neck that I created with clay. And there she is. She's all set and ready to be dressed. And I do also need to paint her face and add her hair. But yeah, this is my process, dolls. I'm really glad I was able to share this with you. Many of you have been asking about how to make a dollhouse doll and I will do a full tutorial about how to make them from start to finish, but I needed to repair this doll. So I figured I would just go ahead and show you how I make a face. So let me get back to work and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now dolls.